In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a sister from the Order of the Bloody Rose. Let's get started with this sister from the Order of the Bloody Rose. So I've primed it in black and I've used grey here over the top in kind of a zenithal prime just to give us, we'll have a quite bright red uh, but also the black underneath will mean we've got some shadows and areas which we're going to find a little more difficult to paint. So the first colour I'm going to use is Mephiston Red and I'm going to use this for all the red armour. Now I've watered it down quite a bit as well, so you may need two thin coats in some places, in other places you'll be you'll be absolutely fine. So just work your way around the armour. Again, be be neat, because if you're neat, there's less tidying up to do later on, which means you can get the model done quickly. If I was doing a squad of these, I'd probably use an airbrush, because it's just a little quicker to get the red base on, and you know you may even consider using a fist and red spray can if you've got some. We'll get hold of some just because it'd be a little bit easier. So work your way around all the power armor, you move quite quick. Uh, don't worry about being too neat around areas, you know, we're going to be darker afterwards as well. Now I'm using a Windsor and Newton brush, nice shiny brand new brush. It's always an exciting time in the household when I get to crack open a new brush, which is quite sad, I know. Um, and all my sort of preferred equipment I list in the description as well. So if you're interested in using the same brushes, airbrush tools that I use then please feel free to check out the description so work your way around the model get all the power armor red and the helmet as well the visor we're going to keep that white so trying to spill anything on there and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the next step for us so just the one coat of Mephiston red seems to have worked uh, pretty well there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the robes, or the, the black part of the robes. So the robes are black on the outside, white on the inside, and the grey sear uh, primer really helps with that. So I'm just going to take some bad and black, and I'm just going to paint up the robes. Um, I'm also going to do anything else we want to be black as well, so any sort of armour joint you've got, and get that done as well. Just be careful when you come to the, the edge. And you can see this is going on okay, but we're probably going to have to go and put two coats of black on. It's better to do it this way because it gives you a nice smooth black rather than a what could be quite clumpy and quite chunky. So we've got the back of the habit here. And then we've got the sleeves and anything else. So the bolt, the casing will be black as well on this. So I'm just going to work my way around, pop another coat on. And we'll come back and we'll do the inside of the robes next. Colour-wise, it's starting to come together a little bit now. So, I'm going to focus on the brown leather. Just try and get all the dark colours painted first before we worry too much about the light colours. So the inside of the habit is going to be white. So we'll do the leather next, and then we'll do the metallics. And then we'll do the white part of the habit and the sort of scrolls that we've got flying off. And then we'll kind of bring it all together and start to, to shade and highlight. So the colour I'm going to use for the leather is Rhinox Hide. Because we want to kind of go for a, a more red kind of leather so just take your time not to paint over any of the black you've or, or red you've already done just work your way around so we've got the gloves we've got the packs kind of here on the leg and then the band in and also we've got the bolt pistol holster on the back so you can see that's going on quite thin so we're going to need another coat so take your time work your way around the model Get all the leather done. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, start to paint up the metallics. The first metallic colour I'm going to do is gold. I'm going to use Retributor Armour for this. Now, there's very little gold on the model, which is why I'm using it. I just want to use it for some of the things that we've got hanging off. So we've got the icon there. I'm just using an older brush for the metallics because I was very aware that my shiny new brush was uh, probably being a little overworked. We've got this little skull just on the habit there so I'm just going to cover that. Looks like I might have to go back in and 
just repair some of that black. So that's all I'm going to do for the gold. Um, next up we'll just get some silver and we'll get the rest of the base colours blocked. The silver I'm going to use is Iron Hand Steel. Now you can use Lead Belcher. I just find Iron Hand Steel is a little brighter and it covers a little better. Now I put a little bit of water into my Iron Hand Steel so I'm mindful that I may need to give it uh, two coats but you thin yours down to what's appropriate for your paint and that it's a question you get all the time is how thin should my paint be and it can be quite difficult to give a recommendation sometimes especially because the the consistency of paint varies from brand to brand and even pot to pot of the same color you know how long has it been there has it had any air going to it um so just do what works for you and what gives you the best coverage. Uh, so I've got the grenades on the belt here that I'm going to do. Just taking my time working around everything. Now there's a few bits, there's like little hooks on here and little um, clips on the bodice there that we need to do. Uh, and also the, we've got the, the ear part here as well. So I'm just going to take my time working around. We've got the strips here on the backpack and we've also got the kind of the central part there as well so i'm going to work my way around get all the silver done and we'll come back and we'll start to think about the lighter colors the white and the kind of cream for the purity seals as i was looking at the source material i realized that actually on the uh, order of the bloody rose all of the fleur-de-lis and iconography is silver as well so just make sure you just go back and paint the feathers there the fleur-de-lis on the shoulder on the weapon just make sure that you've got uh, those met metallic as well i thought they were white but they're not they're actually metal so depending on what colors you like to paint that might actually make things easier uh, what we're going to do next is move on to the white parts and for this we're going to use corax white now corax white is one of those paints that as i was talking about earlier you really can get different types of consistency depending on the paint pot how old it is how long it's been open etc but because we put that gray down first we should cover everything quite nicely and it shouldn't take more than one or two coats of the corax white and corax white's a great color one because it's a base paint and it's quite thick but goes on really smoothly um, but also it's an off white so it's really easy to highlight with a, a hard white like um, white scar so we've got the habit, so we've got the inside of the habit is white. So take your time as you get to the black. Don't worry if you always belong to the black, that's really easy to touch up. You've got that there. We've also got the visor. So let's get that visor done in the Corax white as well. And the eyes as well, because we're going to give some glowing green eyes later on. So just work your way around with this Corax white, taking your time. If ever there's a paint to use sympathetically, it's white. So don't throw it on just little bits. Take your time, work your way around. So when we come back, we'll have a look at doing the purity seals and then we'll start to shade and highlight the entire model because uh, it's starting to look really good. So just use Rakarth Flesh for the purity seal. Just work it on nice and easy, nice and quick. You don't need to watch me doing this for too long. Just so make sure you cover all of the purity seal. Apologies for the sirens outside. Somebody's misbehaving themselves. And then once that's done, we'll come back and we'll start shading and highlighting. The first bit of shading we're going to do is with a little bit of null oil. And I'm going to use this for all the silver metallics. So we've got the silver on the bolt gun here and the fleur-de-lis so just work it on there nice and easily you've got the pipes and everything there so we work it around that one of the other areas i'm going to use it is just up in here with the bodice and the reason i'm doing that is because this is all in shadow because of the bolt gun so if you just work that uh null oil up inside there you can get just get a nice darker red to represent the shadow and you don't have to worry too much it kind of tidies up a lot of the silver work that's gone on in there as well so work your way around all the metallics on the model the silver metallics and then when we come back we will 
have a look at uh, some more shading. Next up, we just want to take some Agrax Earth Shade. Um, we don't want too much of this, a little bit on the brush. Um, and we're going to use that to shade the gold here. So it's kind of a darker gold colour. And this little icon, little skull we've got there. And we also want to pop some on the purity seal. So we want to take our time. We don't want to swamp the model. We just want to get some in the recesses. We don't want there to be too much of a, a colour shift between the kind of light and the dark areas. Because that just uh, makes it easier for us to put some text on there if we want to later uh, it just looks a bit tidier overall as well so a little bit of agrax earth shade that's all done so i think we're ready to go on to the highlighting and uh, maybe we'll shade the white robes first and then we'll shade the red armor all right so come back and we'll get that done to shade the white that we've got on the model i'm going to use apothecary white contrast paint um, really important with this is that you haven't got too much on your brush so if that's your brush that's too much so you want to take some of that off because what you're doing is you just want to put it on um, all over the white so but you want to just glaze it on you don't want to slop it on take your time when you come towards the the red but just work your way around make sure it doesn't pool anywhere in the model what will happen is that dries it'll start to shade the the white quite nicely let's not work it inside the arms here and here and then inside the habit and over the mask as well because we go back we highlight it all up and make sure it's nice and tidy after and then if you do make any mistakes if you run onto the red a little bit that's fine you can just go in and tidy that up with some more Mephiston red so I'm just going to finish the inside there because it's easier to do it off cam and then we'll come back with shade the red next I'm going to shade the red. The colour I'm going to use for this is Coelia Green Shade. So this is a, a nice dark bluey green. That's quite thin as well. So you don't want too much on your brush. Just want to work this into the, the recesses. Don't worry if you overspill because we'll pick that up uh, later on when we do some of the highlighting. Any mistakes you made, you can, you know, go and tidy up with Mephiston Red. Just work around there. Work it around the fleur de lis as well. Don't go over it. Just work your way around. So, for the shoulders, we just want to run this underneath there like that because you've got some studs on there which we'll paint the studs in metal later uh, but we just want to get some shading on there uh, around the studs as well so work your way around the rest of the red armor dropping this coelia green shade in to all the recesses and when you're finished we'll come back and we'll start to highlight everything up once that uh, coelia green shade is dry if you need to then you can go back in and tidy it up with some Mephiston Red. So we're going to highlight the leather next. Just take some Doomball Brown. And we just want to move this along those raised areas. So we're not going to shade the leather. We're going to use the Rhinox Hide as the, the kind of shade colour. So just use a Doomball Brown for those most pronounced edges. On the edge of the glove, maybe... A little bit there as well and don't forget that you've got the pack little packs on the front and don't be too worried about this being a, a thick highlight it actually works quite nice you've got the bit of string there so just work your brush over the the raised area and obviously we've got the back packs as well I think everyone's out today somebody on their motorbike Apologies for the interference and the sound in the background. And if you didn't hear anything, pretend I said nothing. So that's the Doom Bull Brown done. Let that dry and we'll come back. We'll pop another edge highlight on it just to make that leather pop a bit. To make that leather pop, just have a little bit of an extreme highlight. We're just going to use some Scrag Brown for that. So again, I'm switched to a smaller brush. Don't want too much on there. 
and you just kind of want to work it a little bit on those highest points on the knuckles just on the back edge there and this just gives you a nice bit of definition on the softer kind of leather on the gloves so work your way around use it fairly sparingly where you've got the shape of the model you can use it there like that careful not to get in on the red and then we'll come back and we'll move on to the the next highlight color which will be the black so for the black let's take some dark reaper and what i want to do is just draw this down where we've got the highest lines on this habit so you can afford to get quite thick that's okay because what you'll find with the dark reaper is when it dries it'll dry into the black quite nicely so take your time let it dry and then you can think about going in and just adding a little bit more to Add some extra depth, and don't forget you've got the sleeves as well. So this is just going to be the black for the material. We're going to highlight the gun casing in a in a different colour because it kind of it's a it's a hard edge, whereas the habit is kind of a, a softer, more material edge. So I'll finish off highlighting the black with this and then we'll come back and we'll pop another highlight on there. If you think it's not strong enough on some parts, then that's fine. Just go back in and, and add your own uh, additional highlight just to get that colour on there. That uh, Dark Reaper's dried quite nicely in there. So we're going to take some Thunderhawk Blue. And again with this, we don't want too much on the brush, just a little bit. And all we're going to do is we're going to paint this within the Dark Reaper, just on the kind of sharpest parts of the model. So where you've got a big edge like that, you can just run the side of the brush down. That's quite effective. So work your way around the model, just add in this extra highlight with Thunderhawk Blue. And then that's the black highlighting on the material done. We'll do the weapon casing next. For the bolt gun, we just want to use a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey. And this is really simple. All we're going to do is we're going to just move the brush along the edges of the weapon. Just taking our time. Nice and straightforward. Um, I mean, the only place it really gets a little difficult, I guess, is where you've got to follow the follow the lines down. So just hopefully, I've got enough paint on my brush there. It's always better not have enough paint on your brush than too much. Just gonna get the underline there. Work that through. And now we're just going to paint. those lines in there that's it that's the bolt gun highlighted nice and simple so next up we'll do the chrome metallics um, and then we'll have a look at the armor and the inside of the habit and we're pretty much done highlighting the chrome is again or the metallic silver metallics is another really straightforward thing we'll use chrome from Vallejo Model Air and it's a really good silver for for highlighting and we're just kind of doing the same sort of thing that we did just following the edges round just to get that kind of the silver highlight a little bit on the gold as well it's going to catch the light and the skull icon down there and then we've got the kind of silver on the backpack here so it's kind of got the top area to highlight we've got the fleur-de-lis on the shoulder pad which we want to make nice and bright all around there nice and simple 
and then we've got the the wings on this pad so we're just looking to pick out the bottom part of each wing leaving some of that shade in the recess so there we are work your way around the model any other bits that you think you need to highlight with the chrome for silver go ahead um, and the other thing the chrome is useful for now this is a I'm going to do this stage I'm going to work through it but you don't have to do this stage is there's lots of studs on the model and I want to make those studs into like a, a metal color and we've also got all the buttons for the habit so I want to make those buttons silver as well so I'm going to work my way up just dotting them with chrome again you don't have to do this I'm just choosing to do it um, because I think it really adds something to the model so I'm going to go around all the way all the studs so where you've got it on the armor here as well I'm going to paint those my hands a little bit wobbly there so I'm going to come back to those off cam and then we'll have a little look at highlighting the red armor next really happy with how the models coming out so far so let's get on to the red highlighting so we'll highlight the red um, and then we'll highlight the white and then we've just got a few little bits and pieces to do and this model is completely finished so for the red just going to take some evil sun scarlet and what we're doing is we're looking for all those pronounced bits of armor a little dot circle on the knee where it's going to catch the light maybe just there so where we can we want to work the evil sun scarlet down the edges of the armor because that's where it's going to catch the most light and that's where the highlight will be strongest so where you can use the edge of the armor so like I'll do along the shoulder blade shoulder pad sorry there nice and easy same here nice and easy so work your way around the model catching all those raised red edges on the backpack is nice and nice and simple you can just work your way around where you have to you may have to just draw a straight line that's pretty simple just move the brush back with you don't worry if the highlights are a little thick you don't want them too thick but a little bit of thickness is fine because we're going to put a finer highlight in there as well um, and also depending on how sharp you want the red armor to be we may even put a further highlight on there again so where can we round Get that Evil Sun Scarlet everywhere you want it. We'll come back and we'll pop the final highlight on the red armour. Once we've got all that Evil Sun Scarlet done, the last uh, red highlight we want is just a little bit of um, Wild Rider Red. And we just want to pop this on the kind of extreme edges uh, where the light will reflect from. So again, we just want to catch the, the armour around the edges where we can we want this to be a fairly fairly thin highlight because if we make it too thick we'll kind of run the risk of making the armor look a bit too orangey red which we don't want we just want it to be a, a brighter sharper red um, and one of the things that's jumping out at me as well as I do this is you can really see the difference in the kind of the that the primer coat has on it the the bottom's a darker kind of color just because that initial shade that we put on there using the rattle cans really helped us out so go around finish this uh, with the wild rider red popping it into the kind of like the sharpest edges like you know the, the corners here and work your way around and then we'll come back we'll highlight the white and then we'll do a little bit of uh, special effects and this model will be finished. For the white highlight, we're going to take some white scar. And keep this fairly thin and we want to just highlight the edges there. A bit like we did with the black. We're not going to go overboard with the white scar highlight. We just want to be able to kind of see a little bit of acknowledgement that there's a sharper line of white going through there you know, a little bit on the arm here maybe 
a little bit in there not a huge amount then we've got the visor so with the visor just want to be really as tidy as we can just working around the edge where the apothecary white is kind of moved away from so this gives us a nice kind of highlight around there so go around the eyes and what I want to do as well is I just want to dot some of that white scar in the eye sockets themselves that will help us give a nice um, glowing green eye effect So let that white scar dry, pick up any other bits, I mean if you want to do hyper detail you could try maybe highlight underneath every one of these little holes but that will take you a while to do that, again entirely your choice. Um, so we'll get that dry, we'll come back, so there's only a couple of things to do before this model's finished other than base it. So we've got these beads here and we've got the top of the purity seal there um, and I kind of painted this when the Corax white was out. Um, just a little bit of a, a screen a power readout display. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to try and highlight a little bit more on the helmet. It's easier off cam. We'll come back and we'll do those little bits. And then this model's finished. First thing we're going to do is take some Volupus Pink Contrast Paint. I'm just going to move that over these beads. And the reason I'm using this colour, the Order of the Bloody Heart, so this kind of represents the bloody heart as it were and then just going to pop some over the wax purity seal as well so that's nice and easy so when i close this one the next color i'm going to use for the eyes is warp lightning which is also a contrast paint and all we're going to do with that is we're just going to drop it in now you can see i've got a little bit of uh green in there already. I tried doing it with fluorescent green from Vallejo but the effect just didn't work, didn't give me what I wanted. So I'm going to use the warp lightning instead. Just let that dry. See I've got a little bit over the eye so I'll just go back in and tidy that up with some white scar. But this sister, the Order of the Bloody Rose, is complete. Make sure you just go away, base it to match the rest of your army. And I'll see you on the other side. So there we have it. This battle sister from the Order of the Bloody Rose is complete and I think she's looking great. A whole squad or an army of these look fantastic on the tabletop. Thanks again for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, then please leave a like and a comment down below. Like I said, all my recommended equipment is down there in the description. And if you want to get 20% off your wargaming, then please check out Goblin Gaming. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you next time.